retired Admiral Frank L. Skip Bowman as, uh, as, as a longtime naval officer and a former director of the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program. He is currently president and chief executive officer of the Nuclear Energy in, uh, Institute. He is a graduate of Duke University in 1966. In 1973, he completed a dual master's program in nuclear engineering, naval architecture, marine engineering at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and distinguished members of the panel for allowing me the opportunity to testify today. Mr. Chairman, as you noted, I was one of 11 members of the BP U.S. Refineries Independent Safety Review Panel, which was chaired by former Secretary of State Jim Baker. First, let me say that I regret the circumstances that spawned our panel, and that is the catastrophic accident that the Chairman just discussed that occurred at the BP Texas City Refinery on March 23, 2005. I wish to extend my personal sympathy to all the families, colleagues, and friends of those who perished in that accident, including Ms. Eva Rowe, who is here with us today. I also wish to extend my best wishes for continued recovery to those who were injured in that accident. As you just heard, in August 2005, the Chemical Safety Board urgently recommended that BP establish and form an independent panel to quote unquote assess and report on the effectiveness of BP North America's corporate oversight of safety management systems at its refineries and its corporate safety culture. That same urgent recommendation called for a panel with a diverse makeup, including experts in corporate culture, organizational behavior, and experts from other high risk sectors such as nuclear energy and the undersea Navy. I I served on this panel and I suspect I was selected to serve because of my career in the, in the United States Navy and my current position associated with the commercial nuclear ener uh, energy industry. And I suspect that Chairman Merritt included those two uh, requests at least partly because of the uh, significantly good and exemplary process safety uh, record of those two organizations. I served on this panel with 10 very distinguished, dedicated, and hardworking members. Each member brought to the panel a unique set of skills and expertise, and together we fulfilled the stated objective of the Chemical Safety Board. I'm here today in my capacity as a member of that panel. In both my written statement and my oral testimony, I will, will rely very heavily on the executive summary from the panel's report, and I do not intend to interpret or add to that to what the panel said in its report which I think stands on its own. Instead, sir, I would highlight uh, selected portions of it that may be of interest to you and, and to your committee. Mr. Chairman, I ask for your approval to include in the record the panel's entire report along with my written statement. Without objection, thank you. It is significant to note that the panel was not charged with conducting an investigation into the causes of this tragic accident at Texas City. We did not seek to affix blame or apportion responsibility for that accident. Instead, the panel sought to understand if deficiencies in process safety performance existed at BP's U.S. refineries so that we could make recommendations that would enable the, com the company to improve. The panel did not develop su sufficient information to conclude that BP intentionally withheld resources on any safety-related projects for any budgetary reasons. However, the panel did believe that BP did not always ensure that adequate resources were effectively allocated to sustain a high level of process safety performance. The panel found that BP did not implement an integrated, comprehensive, and effective process safety management system. The panel found that neither BP's executive management nor its refining line management had ensured the implementation of such a management system. And the panel found that BP's board in the UK had not ensured as a best practice that management implemented such a system. These findings relating to BP's board were based on UK's guidance in the, on the role of the board as to health and safety practices and not on a failure to comply <coughs> with any legal duties. Among other findings, the panel found material deficiencies in process safety performance at each of BP's five U.S. refineries and that BP had not instilled a common process safety culture among those refineries. Prior to the Texas City accident, BP had emphasized personal safety in recent years and had achieved significant improvement in personal safety performance, but the company had not emphasized process safety. 
BP mistakenly interpreted improving personal injury rates as an indication of acceptable performance and process safety at its U.S. refineries. BP's reliance on this data combined with an inadequate process safety understanding created a false sense of confidence that it was properly addressing process safety risk. BP had not adequately established process safety as a core value across its five U.S. refineries. BP had not made certain that its line management and its U.S. refining workforce even understood what was expected of them in terms of process safety. The panel made specific and extensive recommendations organized under 10 topics, which I would refer to the committee in the full report. One recommendation calls for BP to engage an independent monitor to observe the implementation of the panel's recommendations for the next five years. I would note that on the same day that we issued our report, BP stated that it would <coughs> implement the panel's recommendations. Our report notes that since the Texas City refinery explosion, BP's executive management has expressed a major commitment to a far better process safety regime, has committed significant resources and personnel to that end, and has undertaken or announced many measures that would benefit, beneficially impact process safety. However, the ultimate effectiveness and sustainability of the company's intended improvements can be determined only over time. Let me finish with a, a very short paragraph that, that precedes our report uh, in, in the main report. Preventing process safety accidents requires vigilance. The passing of time without a process accident is not necessarily an indication that all is well and may well, in fact, contribute to a dangerous and growing sense of complacency. When people lose an appreciation of how their safety systems were intended to work, Safety systems and controls can deteriorate, lessons can be forgotten, and hazards and deviations from safe operating procedures can be accepted. Workers and supervisors can increasingly rely on how things were done before rather than rely on sound engineering principles and other controls. People can forget to be afraid. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs>